Hey, what's up guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show, bringing you guys a video that Honestly, I can't believe that anybody actually wants to see, but I've seen some people leaving comments in my videos asking me to do a top 10 kickers list. So yeah, we're going to bring you the top 10 kickers this year that I have ranked for the 2015 NFL season. Now, let me start things off here by pointing out that I don't rank any of these guys in any position that would make them above a, a bottom two pick in your draft type of thing. So don't reach on any of these players, regardless of how consistent they are, regardless of how good they are. It just, it, there isn't enough volatility at the kicker position to really show that there's a big difference between drafting the best kicker and the 12th best kicker. In fact, last year, the best kicker, Steven Goskowski, outscored the, the 12th best kicker, Randy Bullock, by a total of only 28 points in standard ESPN leagues. That's not anywhere near enough for us to actually go and try and reach on Steven Goskowski. I mean, if you're going to reach on somebody, you know, the third to last pick, maybe as far as I would possibly consider reaching. There just isn't any sort of, of evidence that shows that having the best kicker is going to help, help you really win a fantasy championship. So I don't recommend reaching on kickers whatsoever, and we'll talk about why that is in other uh, videos here. We'll talk about that on the, on the podcast, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, defenses are the same, ways, uh, same way, and I'll be doing a video on that as well. But Let's get past that so we understand the basics here. We're not reaching on kickers, guys. That's not good strategy. But I'm going to give you guys my top 10 kickers. Starting things off at number 10, this is a guy who is brand new to his team. That is Josh Scobie of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Josh Scobie takes over from Sean Swisham, who took over, or excuse me, takes over from Garrett Hartley, who took over from Sean Swisham. Hartley and Swisham, both on the IR from injuries sustained this preseason. That is just a crazy situation. If Josh Scobie goes on IR, I am not touching a Pittsburgh kicker because <laughs> that is just crazy if that's how it turns out. But uh, Josh Scobie, formerly a pretty good kicker in Jacksonville, so I, I expect that he'll be totally fine here in Pittsburgh. Uh, last year, the, this, the Pittsburgh kicking situation with Swisham was fairly consistent. Now, Swisham obviously is, is used to that field there in Pittsburgh. Hartley is not. Um, and Scobie certainly is not either. But the bottom line is this, is the Pittsburgh Steelers needed to go find a kicker. They went with Hartley first, so I would have probably had him ranked a little bit higher. Scobie, I'm going to you know drop down to 10th, but this team's offense is so good. They're going to move the ball plenty. I don't have any problem having their kicker on my team. Even if he finishes outside the top 10, I think it'll be in the top 15, so I don't think you're going to lose much by taking a guy like Josh Scobie. Next on the list, we've got Cody Parkey of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this one's a little bit interesting. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here in Philadelphia. Um, this is an interesting, interesting scenario because I think that they're going to run the standard kick or, or like extra point type of a situation when they score touchdowns. But it would not surprise me if Philadelphia came out, especially if they activate Tim Tebow on Sundays and they start running two-point conversion plays because obviously we know that they moved back the extra point marker, so it's now no longer kicked from the two-yard line. So teams are going to be a little bit less likely to make those extra points. You know, Still, you're talking about a 90 or more percent chance of kicking the extra point even from where they moved it back. But I think that there could be situations, especially in close games, where the Eagles might decide that they want to go with a two-point conversion, in which case... That obviously is going to hurt Cody Parkey's value quite a bit. I mean, it's only one point here, one point there. But we talked about the fact that the difference between the best kickers and the 12th best kickers were only a point or two per game. So that can be the difference between Cody Parkey being, you know, a top three kicker or outside the top 12. I mean, it could be very simply that on a week-to-week -week basis. So keep an eye out for that type of stuff, guys. If they start doing that early in the season, I would get rid of Parkey immediately because it's going to show that there's not going to be a whole lot of consistency from him. So just keep that in mind as you're as you're ranking your kickers. If they do decide to go with the standard extra points on a week to week basis, uh, and that remains to be something that they do every single week, then fine. Cody Parkey is going to be totally fine, and that's why I've got him ranked here at number nine. Next, we've got Dan Carpenter of the Buffalo Bills. Not really anything special here. Um, I, I'm, I tend to like teams that have good defenses for kickers, and we'll see one of those later on this list as well. I think Buffalo is going to have a great defense. I think that they're going to be in a lot of games that are going to require grinding, and I think that that's going to lead to some field, uh, to, like you know, playing the field for possession type of things, and which is going to lead then obviously to Dan Carpenter getting some more opportunities to kick field goals. 
So if he can do that, if he's, I mean, obviously he's got a good leg. We've seen that before. He can kick 50 plus yarders, no problem. Um, and if he's just given the opportunity, I think Dan Carpenter, again, is going to be a pretty good uh, kicker. He did finish fourth last year at kicker. So I, I still think that he's going to be in line to kick plenty of field goals for the Bills. Uh, Rex Ryan, new coach, obviously out there in Buffalo. So it could be a little bit different, but uh, with Ryan, a little, probably a little bit more likely to take chances and go for it than previous coaches have been. But I still think Dan Carpenter is going to do a fine job here. And he's definitely worth having as your starting kicker to start the season. Next, we've got Justin Tucker of the Baltimore Ravens. Justin Tucker finished 11th last year at kicker, so just outside of the top 10. But I do think that the additions um, to the offense that the, the Ravens have made this offseason, and I do think that having a little bit more consistency at the running back position this year with Justin Forsett, uh, along with, obviously, Joe Flacco hopefully being able to air the ball out a little bit more, hopefully that's going to put them in more situations to kick field goals, and hopefully Justin Tucker just stays as consistent as he has been. He's been a great kicker pretty much his entire career there hasn't been a lot of situations where we've been questioning whether he should be the kicker of the of the Ravens anymore so uh, I think that he's going to be a fine fantasy kicker to have as well then we've got Matt Bryant here at num Matt Bryant at number six of the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Bryant finished fifth last year, so I'm expecting him to have a relatively similar year this year. Uh, obviously, Atlanta's running situation is a little bit questionable still. If they would have gone out there and acquired a running back that is a little bit better, um, you know, if they would have gone out there and got one of the big free agent running backs, or if they would have gone out there and traded for somebody or drafted somebody early in the draft. I would be a little bit more worried about the situation that I am, than I am as far as from a kicking standpoint. Again, I don't really worry that much about kicker, but I still think that they're going to be roughly the same type of offense that we saw last year. Plenty of passing, not a lot of running at the goal line. So if they don't get into the end zone, we're going to see Matt Bryan kicking a lot of you know 25-yard field goals, which is fine for our fantasy purposes because it's just going to be three points here, three points, three points, three points all year long. They're going to put up good fantasy numbers from the kicker position. Obviously, their offense is great, so they're going to have plenty of opportunities to, to kick extra points as well. So Matt Bryant, I think, is a pretty consistent kicker, and I, that's why I've got him at number six. At number five, we've got Dan Bailey of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Dan Bailey finished sixth last year. I think that the Cowboys offense is going to be interesting this year to watch. I think last year they played a lot more of the ball possession type of offense. They wanted to hold the ball as long as they could, grind it out with the running game. I don't expect that to be quite as much this year. I do expect them to pass a little bit more in 2015 than they did in 2014. So that could mean a better overall offense in terms of yardage. The Cowboys defense played a lot better last year than I personally expected them to. So they were not in as many shootouts as I expect them to be this year. I do expect that Dallas is going to have to move the ball quite a bit here in 2015 to be able to compete. So I'm, I'm expecting there to be quite a few chances for Dan Bailey. He's proven to be a good solid kicker and there's no reason to think that he won't again be in the top 10 at kicker. Then at number four, we've got Brandon McManus, who recently won the job in Denver. I think a lot of people were a little bit surprised by that. He did beat out Connor Barth there. Um, now, Denver did kind of have some kicking situations last year. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're a little bit worried about this whole scenario. But the bottom line is that Denver's offense is still going to be very, very good. We know that they're going to run the ball more this year than they have in the past two years. We understand that. But we still think that they're going to move the ball plenty. They should still be a top five, six, seven offense. I don't think there's any question about that. And obviously, you want kickers on teams that have good offenses because that's just going to give them plenty more opportunities to be able to kick those field goals. So we're going with Brandon McManus at number four. Then on to number three, another similar type of situation here. Adam Vinatieri, future Hall of Famer most likely at kicker, but definitely a kicker that you can use for your fantasy team as well. I'm a big fan of these guys that are playing in indoor stadiums as well because you're not going to see as much inconsistency, especially in the extra points. You know, if you, if you start to see guys playing in a lot of rain and things like that, that could be a little bit of an issue for kicking those longer extra points and especially the longer field goals. Whereas Adam Vinatieri is going to play in that nice, cushy indoor stadium there in Indianapolis. Obviously, he's going to have to, have to play some games outdoors as well, but the majority of his games are going to be played indoors, and that's a big advantage, I think. So that's why Adam Vinatieri, there's not a lot of inconsistency with him. He's been a good kicker his whole career, and I still think with the Indy offense really coming into their own now with Andrew Luck, I still think that Adam Vinatieri is going to be a great kicker this year as well. Number two, we've got Stephen Hoshka. I mentioned before that I like kickers that are on good defenses. 
as well as kickers that ha have teams that have good offenses for different reasons. I think the offenses lend you to more scoring opportunities and the defenses, when a team has a good defense, what tends to happen is that, again, they tend to play a lot more ball control offense, which means they're not going to take as many chances. So if you get down there at, you know, the 35-yard line, for example, and it's four, or it's third and five, a team might decide to run the ball there and maybe pick up three or four. Maybe they kick the, or kick the field goal after that, whereas a more aggressive team that needs to put up more touchdowns, they're probably going to try and pass the ball down the field. And if they pick up that first down, that just puts them more likely of a chance to score a touchdown on that drive. This is just, you know, informal, you know, my just brain thinking about kickers. I don't spend a whole lot of time kick thinking about kickers, but when I do, this is the type of stuff that I think about. And that's why I still think T Stephen Hoshka is going to be a good kicker. Last year, he was the number seven kicker. I expect that Seattle, again, is going to have a great defense. And I think their offense is actually going to be better this year as well. I don't see any reason to think that Jimmy Graham isn't going to help them out substantially. So if he is able to do that, they're going to move the ball down the field a little bit more effectively just in general, which should lead to more opportunities in total for this team to win, uh, to, to uh, have opportunities to kick field goals. So let's move on to the final guy on the list. And I've spent way too much time on this already. But number one, Steven Goskowski. He was the number one kicker last year. He's been a top five kicker pretty much his entire fantasy career. He is the, the exception to the rule. There is so much variance from year to year to year at kicker that it's extremely difficult to predict who is actually going to perform and who is going to be a top 10 kicker. But there's one guy out there, like I said, uh, Goskowski. He's been the number one kicker before multiple years. He's been number two, number three. He's been up there, and it's just it's a consistent thing. It defies really all logic because they play in not such a great situation up there in New England. Uh, they don't have a great field for kicking. It's cold in the winter. Um, there can be rain and, and things like that. But he just tends to kick right through it. He has no problem. He is not phased by it at all. So I'm a big fan of Steven Goskowski. If you can get him, you know, like I said, in your final three rounds, I think that's fine. If you can get him in the final two rounds, that's even better. <laughs> but uh, if you reach on a kicker, it has to be Goskowski, and it, it shouldn't be any earlier than the, the third to final round. Any other kicker besides that, don't take anything before the, the, the end two rounds and third rounds at the, at the very worst. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button. I know for a lot of you guys, this is stupid. You guys don't care about kicker just like I don't. But hey, I know a lot of people ask for it, so I'm going to try and deliver as much as I can for you guys. So again, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. Help me out by subscribing to the channel as well. I would greatly appreciate it. Defenses will be on their way later this afternoon, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.